Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about the KEF Q11 Meta. Now what's really cool about this is I was loaned these pair to review by my local shop, AVIQ in Huntsville, Alabama. So I've got to give them a huge shout out. This shop has all sorts of stuff. It's a huge showroom floor, great owners who really love music, and they have a very rich history with music, live events, recording, things of that nature. So if you're in the Huntsville, Alabama area, please check out AVIQ. They did not pay me to do any of this. They just said, yeah, we'll loan you these. And I said, I'll give you guys a solid shout out. Another thing that is very important to me and to them is we are going to be co-hosting a get together at their shop. I'll have a link to some of the information via their Facebook event page in the description section below. And I'll also put the address for that shop. The event is going to be, ready, get your pen, January 25th from 10 a.m. to about 4 p.m. Again, Huntsville, Alabama, which is about two hours from Nashville, three hours from Atlanta, three hours from Memphis, an hour from Birmingham, Alabama. So if you're familiar with those places, then you have an idea of how much longer it is to get from there to where I am. And I would really love to see you. It's going to be just a, a get together, people hanging out, chatting. And you'll also have some experiences via their demo setups. So please come out, please. It'll be a great event. And I would really, truly love to see you there. Okay. So let's get back to the KEF. These speakers run about $2,100 per pair. They are a three-way design with three quarter inch aluminum dome tweeter with the matte absorber behind it, which is the meta design, a four inch mid-range driver and the mid-range and the tweeter act as a coaxial driver, three six and a half inch base drivers, Sensitivity spec at about 89 decibels, recommended amplifier power from 15 to 225 watts. It is a ported design. A grill does come with it and also a plinth kit for you to set up the speaker so it doesn't topple over. Weight is approximately 50 pounds. Height is approximately 43, 44 inches or so. And if you need that in metric, please Google it because I'm trying to read this off a sheet and I don't have that information right now. As you saw, they come in a black design, but they also come in a wood finish as well as a white color. A few things I wanna mention up front because when I talk about how I set these up, I really want you to have an understanding of what I mean. So when I say distance from a wall, I'm talking about from the back of the speaker to the wall behind the speaker, like you see here in this photo. When I talk about aiming, on axis is pointed directly at you, off axis would be any angle from that. If they cross in front of you, they would be the color in teal, which would be toe in. And if they cross behind you, they would be toed out color in red. Now people define these differently. This is how I define it. And when I talk about room size, I like to use the THX standard. It may make sense to you or it may not make sense to you, but at least it's some standard that I can point to and say, this is what I mean. When I got these speakers set up in my house, I set them about a foot from the back wall because that's really the only space I had available at that time. Now, normally I start off with about three feet and I work my way closer and closer to the wall. But in this case, I actually did the opposite. Now, when I got them in initially, what happened was that I had a lot of Christmas stuff on the floor. I had a lot of boxes and wrapping paper. I just didn't have the space to bring these out from the wall. So like I said, I started with the speakers about a foot from the back wall. And initially they were pointed directly toward me on axis because typically that's how speakers are designed. Now, there are certainly some manufacturers that have a bit of a a rising treble response because they expect that you're gonna turn them off axis. So if you point them directly at you, they may sound a little bit brighter than if you turn them away from you. But typically what I find is most manufacturers design their speakers to be aimed toward you. That's how I set up these speakers initially. I thought these things sounded, oh, I almost cussed, fan-freaking-tastic. Honest to God, I thought they sounded fantastic. Imaging was superb. The soundstage radiation was really nice and wide, maybe not quite as wide as I like for it to be. And I'll explain a little bit more about that when we get further into the data section of this review. The bass was really good. Now here's the catch. If you bring these speakers out from the wall any further than like a foot, and I'm just kind of, I'm kind of thumbing this one here, okay? It's not an exact science because your room and your preference will vary to some degree there. There's a pun in there, some degree. Okay, anyway, uh, if you bring these speakers too far out from the wall, then what you'll notice is the bass sounds a little bit diminished. Well, maybe not even a little bit, quite a bit. If you bring these out, like the standard three feet from the wall that most audiophile types will tell you, you have to bring the speaker out three feet from the wall or a meter from the wall for it to sound good and have depth, which I think in some cases, 
probably BS, okay? Not all speakers are designed to be brought out from the wall, and this is one case where the speaker is not designed to be brought out really far from the wall. You'll see this kind of same thing in other speaker designs. A lot of KEF speakers also had this design, and I'll explain a little bit more why I say what I say and give you some good data to help you understand why that is the case. So, when I brought them out from the wall, I didn't like it. I put them back at about another foot from the wall, off the back wall, and then I towed them out 30 degrees where the speakers were parallel with the wall behind them and had them firing straight out into the room. I still thought they sounded fantastic. So either pointed directly at you or pointed out sounds really good. Now, when you point them out away from you, what you're gonna notice is that the treble is diminished a little bit. And if you compare these directly to a set of speakers that has a flat on axis, but nice smooth off axis profile where everything is pretty linear and it's a well-designed speaker, you're going to notice that these speakers would probably best described as a dark sound. Now, some people may call it warm. And the reason I say that is because when some people call a speaker warm, it's because there's a little bit more mid range. And I'm talking like 300 to 800 Hertz, a little bit more presence in that particular area that gives it a little bit more to it. I don't even know if that showed up. I got a compressor on here but it has a little bit more mid-range weight to it. Not low mid-range, because that would be like 100 to 300 hertz, but mid-range, 300 to about 800 hertz, okay? It's not exact, but it's in that ballpark. These speakers roll off kind of steep, even on axis, they have a tilted profile. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the data as well. So if you go back and you compare these to a flat on axis speaker in a large room with no sidewalls, you are immediately going to think, whoa, where's the treble? But if you have a standard room and maybe even like a medium sized room, remember that THX standard I talked about earlier, but you have sidewalls, this is the most important thing. If you have sidewalls anywhere from like a couple feet to multiple feet away, or, or maybe a couple meters away even, then the speaker is going to sound more neutral. And the reason for that is Kef, even in their white paper, they talk about this, targets an in-room response that is smooth and neutral. A lot of manufacturers will target a flat on axis because since the 70s, that's been what you're supposed to do. But we know after decades worth of research that flat on axis isn't the only thing that matters. And what matters is what happens as you go off to the side of the speaker, namely in terms of reflection. So what happens when the sound bounces off the wall or bounces off the ceiling or even the floor? What happens in the primary listening position? Does it sound neutral or does it sound otherwise? Most of the time, what you're gonna find is designs that were made to sound flat on axis, maybe, have, maybe they had poor off axis response. So the reflections didn't match the same tonality as the on axis sound when the speaker is pointed directly at you or basically the first arrival sound, right? Like the non-reflected sound off the walls, uh, floor and ceiling. So that mismatch often came up as and, and even today, it's very, very common. You'll see a declining in-room response, which is what you want. You don't want flat in-room. That is a terrible idea. And I have a whole video on why that's the case. And I'll try to remember to put it up here in the little link section. So what you want is a smooth declining in-room response. But a lot of manufacturers, when they target the flat response and don't care about what happens to the side of the speaker, what you wind up with is a declining response in the mid-range. And then it kind of flattens out in the high frequency. And then that flattened in the high frequency will sound bright, overbearing, fatiguing, and tiring, glaring, harsh, whatever attributes, subjective attributes that you want to assign to it, it'll sound that way. So typically what you want is a neutral, linear slope to the in-room response. Now, the variation of that slope is based upon a couple different things. Number one is the direct sound. So the first sound that hits your ears, the the radiation pattern of the side of the speaker, meaning that does it radiate very wide? Is it like plus or minus 90 degrees, 180 degrees hemispherical, or is it kind of narrow? Like a lot of horn designs, it's, let's say clips, for example, typically hits about like maybe 30 degrees, plus or minus 30 degrees to plus or minus 40 degrees. So it has more like this V shape to it, kind of narrows up. Whereas some speakers such as the Philharmonic Rao based tweeter design, it's like plus or minus 70, 80, 90 degrees, it's really wide. When you tie all of those things together, then you wind up with an interim response that its slope is gonna vary. In this particular case of this KEF Q11 Meta speaker, 
its slope is pretty steep. So as I said, if you listen to a speaker that is more flat on axis, but still has a nice linear off axis response, its slope may not be as steep. It may be tilted up a little bit like this. And because of that difference, you may find that maybe the kef is a little bit darker sounding. Or if we go to the extreme where a speaker just isn't very well designed and it starts to roll off kind of at a typical neutral response through the mid range, but then at the high frequency, it flattens out. Well, if you compare this to that, then you're gonna say, oh, the mid range sounds similar, but that high frequency is very different. And there's a lot of coloration in that high frequency. So what I tend to prefer is a smooth declining in room response. And the variation of that response is subject to how wide that radiation is. Going back to the subjective and getting away from the technical portion of it, I freaking love these speakers. Honest to God, $2,100 a pair, I would have zero problem setting this up in my living room and calling it a day. If you don't want a subwoofer, can you use these speakers? You can, just do not bring them off the wall more than like a foot. If you do that, or a third of a meter. If you do that, your bass is gonna go down the tubes pretty quickly. Near a wall, it's gonna have good in-room extension, okay? So, having said that, there are a couple other things I wanna factor in. Let's get back to the radiation. The width is about plus or minus 50 degrees. It's nice, it's not super wide, but it's kind of normal. About plus or minus 50 degrees is kind of the norm for KEF designs. Now, if you're looking at a tweeter and a waveguide, that's gonna vary, okay? And keep in mind that the coaxial design here with this KEF is a waveguide design. That mid-range that that tweeter sunken into, that mid-range is a waveguide. If the mid-range was like this, it's basically like a flat baffle and all baffles are waveguides, remember that, okay? That radiates plus or minus 90 degrees, okay? It just radiates like like that, okay? But because this is a little bit more shallow, it radiates like Now, as I said earlier, the kef would be more like kef, sorry, the clips would be more like this, where it's like So it's a little bit more enclosed. This kef is about plus or minus 50. And if my hands are any sort of ratio approximation, this would be about plus or minus 50. So I tend to prefer something that's about plus or minus 60 degrees, all right? And because of that, I feel like these speakers are maybe just a little bit shy, but otherwise I really like these speakers. Let's go ahead and jump into the data. Now, all the data that you're about to see is captured using my Clipple Near Field Scanner, a state-of-the-art robotic device that allows you to get anechoic data in a non-anechoic environment. Here is the on-axis response. Sensitivity is about 88.6. And then look, see this trailing off? If you are in an anechoic environment or you are in a room that has no side walls, this is what you are going to hear. The on-axis response is gonna say, all right, this speaker sounds dark, okay? And I'm gonna give you a sound clip in a second to give you an example of that. But I want you to keep in mind that what you hear in the room is the culmination of direct sound and reflected sound. And that's gonna be displayed for you shortly, okay? F3 at 60 hertz, F10 at 29 hertz. Now, when I said you gotta put the speaker close to a wall to get low bass, this is what I mean. If this speaker has no wall behind it, this is what the profile is gonna look like. It's gonna roll off at around, what, 60 hertz or so. But if you put it in a room close to a wall, then this is gonna fill in pretty well, and it's not gonna sound exaggerated. Now, most speakers that roll off with this kind of profile, if you put it right next to a wall, it's gonna sound boomy. So you have to bring those out from a wall. This speaker was designed to be placed close to the wall. It's called an extended base shelf. You'll see other speakers have this design. Now, let me run through that sound clip for you. This is gonna be pink noise, and then the convuls convolution convolved impulse response of the speaker in the anechoic on-axis position. So it's gonna sound definitely different, but keep in mind that it may not sound as drastic in a room. This is the CEA 2034 data set. Same on axis, listening window as you saw before. But what I really wanted to point out was the decreasing on axis plus the somewhat flat directivity right through here equals very linear sound power. See the slope right here? These guys right here are a better predictor of what you're gonna hear in the room. And speaking of in the room, this is the estimated in room response. Okay, so accounting for sidewalls, especially floor and ceiling as well, but especially sidewall bounce. And then this is kind of how I heard the speaker, this blue line right here. Extremely linear in-room response, in-room extension to about 40 or 50 hertz when placed near a wall. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is give you an idea of when I say 
compare it to another speaker that has maybe a little bit wider profile or maybe is more flat on axis, okay? How does that sound compared to this particular Q11 Meta? And no better way to do that than with other speakers from the Kef line. So that's what we're gonna do right here. I've got a few different speakers. I'm gonna clear them all out. And I'm gonna start with the Q11 Meta. This is the estimated in-room response. Now, if I bring in something like the R3 Meta, you can see that the R3 Meta through the mid-range, because I'm trying to match the one kilohertz area plus or minus an octave. You can see that through the mid-range, it's very similar. The bass profile is somewhat similar in its extended bass shelf response, but it doesn't extend quite as low. So let's just say 60 hertz for this one. And if I come down here, it's about 50 hertz at the same SPL, okay? But the main thing is this. See this orange right here, how it's about, what, maybe two to five decibels, depending on where the frequency is. This R3 Meta, when I reviewed it, I said it could sound a little bit bright if you point it directly at you. This Q11 Meta is gonna sound a little bit dark, certainly compared to the R3 Meta. Now let's look at the Concerto Q Meta, because this is from the same lineup. The Concerto Q is very similar to the Q11, but this bass roll off means that you can probably need to pull it out a little bit further from the wall than you would maybe the R11, okay? R11, the Q11, I should say. But again, top end response is gonna be about two, maybe three decibels or so different from the Q11. So the Q Concerto is gonna sound, I wouldn't say bright by a long shot, but it's gonna sound a little bit more brighter than the Q11 meta. And that's why I say the Q11 meta would probably sound dark, especially if you're coming from a speaker like maybe a Martin Logan, a Focal, or even Eclipse, where they have extended, or not extended, but boosted high frequency. And what a lot of reviewers, and, and I know this sounds like I'm picking on people, and I'm really not, this is just the, the God's honest truth. A lot of reviewers will say that those speakers, because of the boosted high frequency, sound like they have more resolution or more detail. But what they fail to understand is why it sounds that way. And if you have enough data, it's easy to understand why those speakers sound so different compared to something like this Kef Q11 Meta, okay? Burst Decay shows some lingering resonances from about 500 to one kilohertz. These aren't huge resonances, but hey, they're there. This is the horizontal radiation. As I said, it's about plus or minus 50 degrees. I mean, it's not exact, because if you go to about 2K, it's about plus or minus 60. But down here in this trough, I'd say it's about plus or minus 50. Vertically, this is where I was saying, in the lower frequency area, there's a little bit of a dip through here, and that's because of the multiple midwoofers or the multiple bass drivers, okay? But through the mid-range, you're about plus or minus 50, so you got a little bit more wiggle room, especially compared to standard two-way designs that don't use a coaxial speaker. Harmonic distortion at 86 decibels, and then at 96 decibels. Multi-tone distortion also looks quite good. And then if you use a subwoofer across at about 80 hertz, what does that do? That gives us a little bit more wiggle room and distortion, but honestly, not a whole lot. Dynamic range looks good, except we can see that the tweeter is kind of having some issues here, the high, high output volume. This is something that I see in a lot of speakers, especially the more budget-friendly speakers. In summary, what I think of the Q11 meta is, if this is in your budget and this is something you're eyeing, go ahead and buy it. It's a really good speaker. It might sound dark to you if you have a big, big room with little to no sidewall reflection. And in that case, that would probably be the only reason you don't like this speaker. But if you have maybe a medium, small, medium sized room and you have nearby wall reflections, I would say like up to six feet or so, so maybe roughly two meters, then you're gonna be completely fine. It won't sound as dark as the on-axis data shows. But if you don't have sidewall reflections, I think probably best to look at other options. Again, I wanna give a shout out to AVIQ in Huntsville, Alabama for loaning me this pair of speakers. And once again, please come out to our event, January 25th on a Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Information will be in the description section below. And if you'd like to support what I'm doing here, you can join me at patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner, or you can use any of my generic affiliate links. If you're interested in buying the speaker, click that Crutchville link and then type in Q11 Meta and then buy it through that. And that earns me a small commission at no additional cost to you. It's not a direct link because I don't do direct links anymore, but I'm, I'm just asking you, do me a solid if you want to buy the speaker, go out and use that affiliate link or even Amazon, okay? All right, uh, somebody just shot off a firework at my house. I know I live in Alabama. That's not a shotgun. Pretty sure that's a firework. I'm out of here before something hits me. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.